Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Chris. <laughs> exactly. It's a very. Re- it's the uh, Department of Redundancy Department tonight. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. parents with creative name giving skills. Uh, in the early '80s, late '70s. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you and I are right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am 1980, so I'm one of those weird kids who's like, I'm not quite Gen X and I'm not quite a millennial. I'm in that weird in between space. Yeah. So I understand, like Xennial. Yeah, exactly. It's like I. I do think that is like, it's like 1978 to like 1983. Like it's this weird. Yeah. Anyway, we don't have to get off on that whole tangent. So um, as always, our podcast about anything and everything we're off road. We're, we're always socially distant to, to be honest. Socially distant wasn't a thing when we started the podcast, the first time we had Chris on and it has since become a thing. So uh, oh. I'm still in the Midwest, Ross in the Northeast and Chris is in North Carolina still. Yep. 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 Not leaving here. Fact check. Not leaving here. I think social distancing was a thing because that was two years ago, <laughs> November of 21. Yeah. And I have some details that I want you to examine better. later. The technology yeah. gotten better. <laughs> we're nor- we're, it's more <laughs> normalized. <laughs> and yet people still manage to screw up Zoom and all that stuff, which, yeah. guilty. Are you making fun of me for talking while muted like three shows ago? Oh my God. That was a bad I, one. It was a long statement, Chris, that eventually the guest let me know I was on mute. I'm like, well, this has gone very well. So he was really broken today. Oh <laughs> operator. Ross, do you want to give us an update of your epic road trip? And I'm saying epic oh, because everyone so, says epic. And I know it was only like four hundred miles. So well, two hundred miles. Like it wasn't even I took a burb. No, um I You did drive a burb. I did. I think we talked about it last time, but I had the suburban high country with the three liter baby Duramax engine. Uh, I put, I did like a 250 mile road trip, which isn't much by road trip standards, but um, considering how far I haven't gone uh, lately, it was, it was, you know, it was enough. Um, $91,000 has tested, not cheap, Ooh. but I, that is my favorite powertrain of any vehicle I've driven in the last possibly ever. It makes great power. It sounds like a freaking Cummins. Um, I averaged, what was the picture I sent you, Chris? I, it was like 25.6 miles per gallon. With uh, I'm trying miles to gallon find it right now. That <clears throat> in in mixed speed? driving. Yeah, it's the 10 speed. And, and that's mixed driving, you know, with like, long idle times because it was 23 degrees overnight two of the nights that i had it and wow. it's just so calm and so smooth and so refined and and spending okay so that was a long i can't find way. the second photo i can't remember where you sent it to me oh, at there. was it in yeah, instagram <laughs> maybe no it, it must have been on on slack but it, it at one point it was telling me i had a theoretical range of like 725 miles which wow. It's almost a thirty well, gallon tank, and if you get twenty six miles per gallon, then you're it's not that much of a stretch, you know. Um yeah, yeah the picture here is is over seven hundred. But it's man, that engine is just so good. Like the suburban's good and, and spending time with the suburban, I I looked at my wife and I was like, Oh, I, I understand why Chris likes this now. Like it's oh it's just so easy. It's so So don't you have a suburban, Chris? Does. Yeah, I do have a twenty seventeen suburban. Yeah. So what what what's your average MPG on that thing? Oh, not as fun <laughs> as twenty five. So um, I took I took a trip back in I think it was in May up. So I drove from Kansas City to um, Elkhart mm-hmm. Lake, Wisconsin, where Road America is, and I I left. So I I filled up the night before, left early in the morning. The first place I got gas was actually in Madison, Wisconsin. Like it was way up there. I got you five, 30, over 500 miles on a tank. Yeah, you have a 32 gallon tank, right? Yeah, I got the 32 gallon tank. And I was averaging like 20 to 21. And so like I had to have a tailwind with me too. Um, <laughs> typically, typically for me, like I'm like 13 to 15 around town. Um, mm-hmm. The 15 is if like I had to jet on the interstate for something, some errand. And so it like moves mm-hmm. the numbers up a little bit. Typically, when we're headed out to the mountains, I'm sitting around like 17, 18 on like the running at like 
allegedly around 80 miles an hour going I out mean, to Colorado. Considering yeah. the, how jam packed that thing is when you guys go on trips, that's pretty solid. Yeah. Oh yeah. Four, four kids, two adults. Uh, the last time we, so we went to South central Colorado last time we went to Pagosa Springs and on the way out, which is practically downhill for a lot of it. And we had this weird tailwind that we never had. And the wind's always South or North. And we had this tailwind. Um, I was seeing close to like 24 ish. And I know I sent Ross a picture of my, when I filled up my range jumped to 683 miles yeah, that's of range. Twice what I see as like a maximum range on my truck, but on your GX. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but so yeah, so like the, the really weighs down to like, you know, the cost difference between your suburban and that diesel suburban, you know, how much right. yeah, really, see, the was your suburban $90,000, Chris? It was not. It was purchased yeah. used with 124,000 miles for <laughs> low 30s during the pandemic. Like, yeah. Um, so it's a third of, yeah. You could buy a $60,000 fuel uh, budget. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying fuel and or maintenance. $1,000. Yeah. On any planet Forget about maintenance. for a suburban. Um, <laughs> but that engine, dude, if that engine was available in like a Z71 Tahoe with cloth seats, that would be, oh man, that would be the best. Do they offer it in anything besides oh, the suburban? Yeah, it's in the Tahoe and the Yukon and the you know okay. the XL and the Escalade and the ESV and the Silverado and the Sierra. <laughs> but isn't it's, it only on like the higher trim levels? I don't think so. I think they changed that so you can get it on the maybe on like the Yukon and the Escalade. I'm pretty sure you can get it on the lower trim Silverados though. It it's so good that when I when I think about the possibility of having the GX for 20 years and getting pissed off at the engine and yanking it out and doing an LS swap, I think I would rather do this engine by a factor of 50. It's so mm. good. It's, oh. It, well, know. but you're talking about when you're going into Colorado, so we, we run our own freight now from North Carolina to Colorado and back. Oh, so wow. we're running a truck out every other month. I was just, I just came through Kansas City on Thursday. Um, oh, I mean, I you could have said in, something. I had gotten you some barbecue uh, at least. I know. Next time I need to do that. I stayed, <laughs> well, ha exactly halfway between us and Denver is uh, Columbia. So okay, I stayed yeah. the night in Columbia, Missouri. Um, but it's amazing how, so we, we keep track of every tank uh, on the mileage and we always get the best mileage like from here to, you know, say uh, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the wind out there is just such a variable. Yeah, there it is. Um, to where we always get our worst mileage out in the plains, no matter what. Going, at, so, coming up, coming down, it's always the worst out there because the wind can just, you're just, it just kills you. Yep. And those yeah. long, slow non altitude forgiving. changes. <laughs> Bad always. But so, I've been trying to I've been trying to do things with that rig, get better mileage out of it. My goal has been to hit to get to average ten miles per gallon on a trip. And uh, oh man, you, you got to do the big yet. like nineteen nineties like NASCAR freight hauler fairing over the I roof, know. Well, like this, this swoopy one. I put the nose cone on it, and that made a big difference. Um, it def I don't know that it helped with the mileage, but it really helped with the buffeting. Um, mm, from just okay. having that block just hit the oh, wind, yeah. like um, it made a huge flat difference. Surface right over your head. Yeah. So now, but even that was like a thousand dollars by the time it was installed. So now mm. it's like, okay, you know what? Do we keep making mods to chase miles per gallon? You know, what do we chase one mile per gallon? You know, where where do we outweigh? You know, yep. yeah, yeah, the yeah. investment. What? So, all right, hold on. We'll we'll go back to that because I want to talk about <laughs> right. what was in that <laughs> picture that we just <laughs> started on. Um, my only other update is I have this BMW i7 M60 thing for the week. It's I just drove it. It drives amazing. Rear steers the like the turning radius is amazing. Um, is it a it car is, or an SUV? It is, it is the the electric electric seven series. Okay, and it is it, it's a good thing that oh, it drives my. so well and that the tech is so good because it is not good to look at. But I don't think you don't look at it from uh, the anymore. Yeah, it's um, it's a. I don't. Oh, I'm <laughs> mouth shut. 
<laughs> I, I hope it's this color scheme. Oh my god, it's so ugly. <laughs> no, god no. What I have is matte black, so at least it like kinda tones down how so hideous. That is the ugliest is. car. Um it has some what's BMW stuff like doing? Uh selling cars. You know, people are looking at are it. Are they though? That's, that's how you sell cars these days. Oh, this has those crazy powered doors. Like they have a button you push and the door that's exactly like the one that's parked outside. Actually, there's a nine C W. See if that is the one. Hmm. Is it California plates? Is that the one you have? Yeah, and nine C W G zero eight three. Mine's mine's eight eight. Oh, um, that's funny. The interior is, is manufacturer pretty, plate. Yeah, yeah, it's all okay. These are, you know, demos. Um, yeah, I mean, you look at that yeah. next one, S class, and you tell me that the S class isn't a hundred times more attractive. Oh yeah, but then you put it against like a an S eight or you know anything like that. Even the the Genesis, the G ninety is so pretty compared to this. Yeah, but it's so got my, some cool, my favorite uh, cool stuff going on. <clears throat> my favorite part for the audio listener, the description of this car it looks like someone's squinting and at the same time, like. Trying to make up. two circles <laughs> with their mouth, yeah, like Baring, it's like a err, like a yeah. Their teeth, like yeah, it's like a not good, pissed mm. off clown or something. But it's the classic um, Top Gear bit of the Jaguar. Yeah, I don't even remember which car, which series that was, but it was exactly. like the the miniature grill. Yeah. So it was like, like it just. Oh no, we're doing different ones. <laughs> That works. That's very good. Copyright yeah, them. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> they can't get us for copyright infringement if we do two two different yeah, things. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's it. That's, we'll talk more about that next time after I put some miles on it. And sweet. You have updates. You put miles on something. Uh, the Michelins that I got for the Suburban are installed. I have yet to have time to take photos of them. Um, I will do that soon, and I got to write it up for both Universe and our website. Um, all the road noise that I was experiencing before was definitely the older tires that were wearing down. Um, it rides quiet. And I, I definitely think I talked about this with Dave last time is like the list of things that now has like, it's it, I'm taking it in for an oil change real soon. So we'll see what the dealer comes back with, but I know already like rear uh -huh. brakes are happening very soon. Um, pads and rotors. They, two times ago, they hit me up. They were like, we smell coolant. And I was like, well, I don't see smoke in my exhaust. So where's it going? Yeah. And they were like, well, we smell it. So it's leaking somewhere. And I was like, where? And they were like, we don't know. So you need a new radiator and new heater hoses and all this other new stuff. And I was like, pause. Um, yeah. And then raise your hand if you don't smell coolant. I do, I do actually smell coolant around it. Oh, really? Um, so oh, I just, yeah. Yeah. Some, like coolant. Get some dye. They just get the UV dye, put like a little yeah. in there and then just trace it with the light. Cost well, you 10 the bucks. other thing I did was I bought a little bit of coolant and I just top it off every now and then. So that also works. <laughs> Bandit, but it works. My, I'm not cheap. quite redneck yeah. engineering, but I'm kind of close. Uh, yeah. I got a roll of duct tape and a bottle of coolant. We're going to call it fixed. Yeah. And actually, uh, I my oldest drives a 2000 mm -hmm. Lexus LX470. Um, it's been a mm -hmm. while since I'd like driven it. So I went and put gas in it the other night. And I was like, let me pop the hood here and see what's going on. And he was running low. His overflow reservoir was down at the very bottom and I was like, oh, well, let's go ahead and put a little cool in this too. So I'm, I might be doing some heater hoses and radiators on two vehicles. So we'll, we'll see. So as it turns out, and I just had to confirm that this is still available, but I happen to work for and represent a brand that sells engine cooling system UV dye. So I can try there to you get go. you some. Go ahead and send send an email to somebody, Ross, and then I, you can email me, and then we can. Well, I'm unfortunately I'm the one to email, so well, I guess it's fine. You're the one to email. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's I'm like, gonna guess who I'm? I was like, guess who I'm not emailing? So you go ahead and <laughs> let me know. I'll, I'll get you some. <laughs> we communicate yourself. enough as it is to then have to talk about yeah, stuff yeah. like that too, from in a business setting. So, but the the plan is to actually like. Chris build out the suburban and, and go, I used to have a leveling kit on it. Um, and, and really enjoyed it, but there were some weird suspension noises. And so I was like, I'm got to take the leveling kit off. Um, 
where did I save my photos? It always helps to have a visual when you're talking, right? Um, so visual. depends on what the visual. Yeah, are. usually, Ty scared. typically visual. <clears throat> so obviously, brand new tires are on it. It's driving great. It is still basically my daily that's going to get used for all the kids sporting event stuff too. Most of the off the roading I'm, that I'm going to do is not super severe. So I don't know that we need a super aggressive tire. And there's part of me that also wants to be the guy who off roads with the, most of a highway tire and makes everybody with their all terrains and mud terrains look dumb. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try and pull that off, but front bumper sliders, eventually rear bumper. I have, at least I know of a company that makes bumpers for these things. Um, sliders are going to be a stretch. We're going to have to talk to some manufacturers. But as I was like, yeah, all right, let's bumper. think about, yeah. And we'll skip places looking, all going to have to be. That's with the custom. level. Thank you. Pick. Yeah. That's with the level one kit on it already. Yeah. It looks good. So I gotta, I gotta get back to that stance right now. It looks like an old Red Bull F1 car. It's got a little rake to it <laughs> and I, that drives me nuts. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're probably you looking know, three inches total front and rear to like level it out and get it up in the air again. We um, need to go on a collective chrome removal remediation. E chrome quest between both of our vehicles. Well, that's that's why I have the LX because it's already dechromed, and so I, if I want to like not, I just I point chrome at the LX. Is coming back a little bit. I think Chrome is about to make a little re. Uh, think so. Reburst. I think so. Chrome and polish. Mm -hmm. I think it's. I think we're we're on the cusp of it coming back. Gracefully, uh, yeah. everything. What is the fashion thing about style? Like Everything's cyclical. Years? Twenty years. Yeah. Twenty years. Here we are. I just did that with my RV. I was like, I'm just going to leave this. I'm going to leave the chrome bumper and the chrome grill, put some polished mm -hmm. wheels on it, and just, just, just rock it. <clears throat> That's yeah. awesome. I did it too to save so, money. I was like, I, I got. I'm sick of just throwing everything at every vehicle I have. So yeah. I was like, let's take, let's right. take it back a couple of notches. Just not spend all the money on this thing. Rattle can Which, wasn't going to fly, huh? No. <laughs> no, not for him. <laughs> not when no. you're selling no. stuff my, too, Ross. My, He's got a reputation to maintain. That's, yeah, that's he, you and well, I, a lot of older guys, <laughs> older guys love the polished and chrome look. Yeah. So I think that's part of it too. Is those guys are getting into their, you know, fifties and sixties, and <clears throat> well, I say fifties. I'm almost fifty now. It was just weird to say. But your boomer guys, um, right. they like right. they miss those chrome days. And the like that a lot of them they like it, and they I think do it's... look. It does look good in the right application. Yes, the right vehicle. Yes. That suburban looks good Thank with the, with the chrome and those wheels on it. Yeah. It looks good. It doesn't look dated or you no. know or looks or like you're trying to be something you're not. It looks better yeah, than the good. one it's they're selling nice. right now. Sometimes yeah. some vehicles uh, the new when ones they get are... dechromed look terrible. I think that is um, true. Look tacky. Yeah, like. Unfinished. Yeah, it's just too much. Um, Chris, so my, my only other Facebook update, group? Ross, real fast. Yeah. Can I get it to you? Mm -hmm. So I thought, hey, since I'm going to build a Suburban, I should probably find like some more intelligent people to talk about like suspension and stuff like that. So you went and to I, a Facebook group. I went to a couple <laughs> of Suburban Facebook people. groups. Holy shit. People's sus transmissions blow up all the time. Well, yeah. What is it? It's, it's the 6L60E and the 8L60E from GM. And like, there are people on there with like 80,000 miles. I'm pushing 190, which I think is still the stock suspension. I don't have any history on this thing to know if it went before 120. Yeah, but I tend to think you treat your vehicle better than the average person who's killing a trans at 85. I, I promise you, I have not changed transmission fluid in. Probably 70,000 miles almost. Probably should. Oh, really? That's a debate for a different time. Well, there's there's a bunch of guys that are like, don't change it because whatever gunk's in there holding it together, as soon as mm. you change it, that gunk's not holding it anymore and then it's going to blow up. That's so old like, school. That's old school mentality. Yeah. It depends. There's so many factors to play here. Right. So as soon as I feel it slipping, then I'm like, fuck. So there's like part of my build budget is now going to have to be set aside for potential transmission rebuild. Yeah. Well, if they break all the time, that means they're, they're cheap to replace. So Ho there you go. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that, 
when the local parts store, you call your local advance store, they're like, we got two on the shelf. You're like, oh, shit. That's not good. <laughs> that's, that, that's, that that's means definitely a these bad things news. break on, on the reg. Right. Then you say, right. any of your employees do side gigs. And which one <laughs> of them is the GM guy? Well, then, then I'm just going to go straight to the transmission shop. Like, I'll just go that. straight to the guys that only do that. That's true. That is um, true. Yeah, and if you're going to lift it, well, well, we'll talk about that. Yeah, so. I so I messed up by joining a Facebook book group trying to get better educated. Now now I'm just constantly like, wait, was that my transmission? Wait, was that my transmission? Like, yeah. yeah, but I mean, you got to, yeah, you have to take it all. As you guys know, with a grain of salt, you can't trust half these things. I go in, I'm not even right. in any van groups anymore because I just couldn't deal with it. But the amount of every once in a while I'll, I'll go visit, and the amount of misinformation is insane. Well, um, you're, well, you're just like, it, it would take it would be a full time job just to keep up with the daily bullshit <laughs> and misinformation that's out there. You gotta wonder right. about people who like moderate those groups. Like, I think they give they, up. They ha they can't yeah. they unless they're just obsessed with it and spend a bunch of like hours a day on it. You can't. You just get overwhelmed. To each their own. And eventually, they just say, um, "Fuck it." <laughs> I don't know why am I doing right. this. So, speaking of vans, Chris, why don't you introduce yourself? Do the thirty-second elevator pitch before we catch up on uh, what you've been up to over the last couple of years since the All last right. time on the show. Um, well, I'm Chris Stuber. I own You Join Off Road, uh, North Carolina. We build four-wheel drive vans, E series, Ford E series four-wheel drive vans. Specifically, we also have a shop in Colorado. Um, that we'll get to, we'll talk about later. That's fairly new. I think if we were two years ago, we were just yeah. getting started with Colorado guys. I don't um, so yeah, know. Yeah, I've been doing these Colorado vans since up. 2007 and yeah, kind of went full time in 2010. And mm -hmm. we've just been building vans since then. And uh, we, you know, we built bumpers and accessories and lots of stuff, but we're solely focused on the Ford E series. And um, yeah. It's all we are they, do. Are they still turning out E series chassis? Cutaways. Yeah. Cutaways. Yeah. Yeah. So U Haul, no, not even uh, U Hauls. You don't even see that many, but yeah, RVs, box trucks, mm. U Hauls, all those are still E series. I've got five hmm. box trucks on order right now, brand new oh, wow. from Ford. They've been on order for a year and we still don't have them. So. Which, which motor are you liking these days? Because I remember last time, weren't you putting a Godzilla in something? No, I, well, I thought about doing a Godzilla swap on my green flatbed on V4 one point. That's, yeah, that's the one we're um, talking about. But then I realized that motor swaps are usually a bad idea um, and Most never as reliable as stock. So I, that's when I decided to to order V4 2.0. Gotcha. Uh, that's the blue truck. So I so instead of Godzilla swapping, I just said, why don't I just buy something with a Godzilla already in? That's oh, yeah. Yeah, the safer, <laughs> smarter, that's the smarter thing to do. Yeah. So that's yeah, a... so we dismantled the green truck. I kept everything I wanted to keep, which is basically just the bed and the rear suspension pieces, mm -hmm. um, and then started from scratch with everything else. Okay. We kept the coilovers. That... I kept the coilovers all the way around, um, but it saved us a lot of time with starting from complete scratch. Um, yeah. So. And I made a lot of changes. I know that's something you guys want to talk about too. Um, I, I changed yeah, a so few things that annoyed me on the first rig. Let's let's talk about that. So, first of all, the E Series van is like a known entity. You've kind of curated your own package setup and mm -hmm. what works and what doesn't work. So, how do you yeah. fine tune from you know? v4 one to v4 two or iteration of you know one one variant to the next how what kind of testing is well that? that thing is just basically a toy like that literally has one production part on it which oh. is the front bumper so mm -hmm. that thing was just a, an idea of mine to push the limits of what has been done with the e-series chassis um, okay so i said all right i, I kind of want to link one up and I said, well, why don't we link it front and rear? Um, and so that's why we built, I built that thing just to push the limits and to say, you know, let's, let's yeah. get some attention and see what can be done with this chassis. 
uh, pretty our regular cool. conversions are all leaf sprung. And so with that also, we've been refining okay. over the years, um, you know, mainly springs, um, you know, spring rates are the key, especially when mm-hmm. dealing with a leaf spring, uh, yep. because that's the re- one of the reasons leaf springs have such a bad reputation is because people don't want to fine tune them. So one size does not manufacturers, fit all. Yeah, yeah, they say, okay, overbuild the shit out of the spring so it never sags. We never have a warranty issue with it. Right, right. It's a good, it yeah, good before like, and after. Bounces all over the place um, and crashes. Yeah, so if you've got a super stiff spring, it's going to ride terrible and everybody hates life. Um, yep. So we like to ride to balance on the fine line of load capacity and ride. Mm. So the closer you get it to the actual weights, um, the better it rides. And, and the I've taken. It'll do off road in all situations so, right. yeah. everything um i've taken countless people on rides you know people that own coil sprung vans r- other vehicles and mm-hmm. I, it always amazes them how well they drive and handle and ride um, mm-hmm. once we convert them and this is especially true with the rvs you know the rvs all, every one of them are under sprung from the factory so um you know, they go from the ford factory to the rv factory they plop a bunch of weight on it they might Put some band-aids on it like a bigger sway bar or some shocks but that's it that's so you're just wallering down the road oh, so shit. that's why we spec springs to the rig so that van right or that rv right yeah. there has you know five thousand pound front ten thousand pound rear capacity springs jesus and so you what, drive you that running... thing down the road like you would drive your suburban and, um, and you know i assume e-rated tires on everything right yeah oh always yeah okay What's the uh, tire size of choice for the majority of these? Well, the RVs, we stick to the same size. So we're running, it's basically a 33. It's a, okay. it's a 285, 70, 17 up front okay. with a 255, 80, 17 in the rear. Mm-hmm. So same diameter. Yeah, that's a pretty, that's, that's like the, I mean, that's what I have on, on my GX. That's the standard go-to, mm-hmm. you know, 32.8 inch, like oversize exactly. for what people think of as, Otherwise, stock. But, and what's okay. cool is that we've gotten more. In, for years, we only had like two tire choices. You know, it's mm-hmm. like Toyo Muds or BFG mm-hmm. Muds and some yep. Coopers. But now we've got, you know, um, Toyo has um, ATs and their yep. RT Trail. And then Nitto, we've got the uh, this one. Recon. The, the, uh, yep. Recon Grappler. We've got the Ridge Grappler. So yep. it's really cool. We've got some good tire choices now. I've got the Recon Grapplers on my RV. And my daily driver van, and I love them. They're mm. so nice. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, the tire world. I mean, the tire testing that we do and that the average user does is, let's say, quite a bit different from what these things are subjected to. So, yeah. Yeah, you air that thing down to go on the beach at 20 psi and yeah. let her go. And they right. do, they do so, pretty well. For everybody thinking you need an e rated tire for your, you know, Forerunner Tacoma, you don't. Oh, you can ruin it's a little it. Over no. yeah. yeah, that's what I have. We'll I have There's a lot of more F rated tires coming out now, which is cool. Really? Yep. I, I haven't even happened upon an F rated tire in in like thirty fives. My last uh, DD van had F rated thirty five twelve fifty eighteen. Holy shit! That I I guess that's that's what people who have you know the. The pickups that they claim can tow like thirty thousand pounds are going to end up running. Exactly, that's what it's for. That is so we're seeing more of that. Some we're seeing more of those tires now. But so let's uh, let's talk Colorado. Go, cool. What you doing? Um, so um, well, we yeah, just a little over two years ago. So Justin, it's a franchise. So Justin owns a shop out there. He was a customer at first, mm-hmm. and um did his van we wound up doing some trading he had a it was it's funny how things just work out i was building the suspension on my volvo wagon project he's a volvo guy and we started chatting uh, and i had ordered a bunch of stuff and he, and i said well, hey what do you think of this stuff and he's like oh it's garbage like that's you don't want that you want this stuff and i had no idea what he was talking about so i i said to myself well you know, I expect this guy to trust me with van suspension. I need to trust him with my Volvo right. suspension. Right. So, Spears, um, two ways there. So we wound up um, wow. doing some trading, and he built his van, which is that one. And um, you know, I saw that he was a good tech, 
Um, he did a really good job on his install and he was interested in doing more. So I said, Hey, do you want to, he, he was part of a independent Volvo shop in Denver. And mm -hmm. I said, do you want to do some installs? And he's like, hell yeah. So I would sell kits, ship them to him. He would install them. And he did that. He did, gosh, four or five at that shop. Mm -hmm. And then he basically made the decision. He's like, I, I kind of want to go on my own and just do vans. And I have to give him credit for the name stuff. So I've, I thought, when he told me that, I said, awesome. I'll send you, I'll keep you busy. Like, I will send you enough work for you to be busy, yeah. hire some guys full time, no mm -hmm. problem. And he's the one to push. He said, I really want to be, I want the name. I want to be called New Joint Off Road. So we went back and forth on that. And then, uh, yeah, had a lawyer write it up and and off off we went. Within a couple months, he was booked out for, you know, six to nine months. Oh shit. Sure. Now he's got now he's got three wow. guys working for him. He's already expanded into the shop next door. And um wow. yeah. He's good for that. He, they're kicking ass out there. Such a hot spot. I mean, you guys know that. Yeah. Like the amount of E series vans that are running around out there, but well, just within a day's drive of him. If yeah. you were to get something to him kind of thing, like it makes so much sense. Yeah. It's always been a hot spot for us. Um, you know, we've got, a, we've, we've had, I've had vans in Colorado for since day one, but this is just another level. People can go there and know that they're getting the same level of service and, and quality of install that they're getting here right. um, with our parts. And so it's a huge asset. And, um, it's been a lot of fun. Now he's busy. So he's keeping us busy too. So now my shop, has to figure out how to feed ourselves and him um, with parts. parts. And so <laughs> yeah, we've been out of room for that. years. <clears throat> so we're running now. We're running trucks out there every other month. Oh, wow. That's Man, great. That's, that's a damn good problem. <clears throat> well, so, we, start, we started running all these shipping problems. There's, the freight lines between us and there yeah. are terrible. Uh, most of the carriers are the bottom, the, the, the bottom feeder carriers and we were getting way too many pallets damaged, bumpers damaged, things lost. At oh, one point during COVID, he, we sent a pallet to him and or two pallets, and it showed. He tracked it he there at the terminal. He called the terminal like, "Hey, like you know, when's my stuff coming?" They're like, "Oh, yeah, we don't have any staff to unload it, so it's going to be about two weeks." Oh, what? Then he was like, "What? <laughs> like I need these parts now." Yeah. So he had to go to the freight terminal and get his own parts off a truck. And oh my god. It's just, this is ridiculous. So yeah, again, that's, that's crazy. another great idea from him. He's like, I'm going to rent a U-Haul and just come. I'm going to fly in, rent a U-Haul and just haul my own stuff back. <clears throat> I said, Smart. okay. So then we bought it. We bought the U-Haul and, mm. um, the old bought, van. Yep. Yeah, bought the U-Haul with a blown head gasket, 160,000 miles and, um, got it set up with, you know, insulated it. Put some massaging seats in it. Nice. Update the stereo. We just made it more comfortable for for those kinds of trips. For and, running uh, most of the way across the country. Yeah. So we've been doing it as a four day, two man team. Two days out, two days back. Um, this past time, Justin flew in, drove it to Colorado, and then it sat there for two weeks. And then I flew out Wednesday and drove it back got home Friday. So, to that, that is a long drive. And yeah, to, just to clarify, what are you putting in the back of what, what size you haul it? Or it's what a size seventeen you foot. So, so it was a U haul. Now it's your truck. Yeah, it was a U haul. They kind of retired the seventeen four? footers. Now I'm a Utah a, a U haul geek. So now I spot every U haul yeah. and I take a mental note of like if it's a fifteen footer or a twenty footer. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. we. Another huge benefit and a time saver to have the U-Haul is so as we build bumpers here, we built a rack. The whole front wall of the U-Haul is a bumper rack. Nice. So we, we finish a bumper. We just carry it out to the U-Haul and bolt it. Similar to that. That's pretty smart. Um, bolt Are it right to the U-Haul. Are you vehicles in this thing? No. No, no, no. Just Would parts. Would fit? Just parts. Okay. Not a van, but a little car would fit. Yeah. So we don't have to wrap the pallet. We don't have to wrap the bumper. We don't have to cushion it. We don't have to be careful with packaging. Um, we just bolt mm -hmm. it to the rack. And then everything else, we just palletize axles, T cases, you know, pallets of just boxes full of parts. Yeah. Um, so it saves us a lot That's of so money smart. in freight and yeah. um, ensures and that the headaches. parts are getting there on time. 
not damaged, though. So, customer question. And you might not have an answer to this, but in mm. terms of, like, the buying the cu- your your customer base, are they... Is it all private use? Is there any, like, commercial stuff or government or fleet mm-hmm. or anything? Do you, do you have any idea of the mix? Um, for all, all customer use. I've never... Okay. had any success with any type of <clears throat> fleet government um mm-hmm. even a lot of like contractors um they always just look at cost so yeah, you know especially any government true. or municipality they're they're looking at costs they have to get bids from multiple places because i've given mm-hmm. these bids over the years yeah, not as much yeah. anymore but um they you know the people making the decisions don't care about performance you know they just what's the, what's because the they'll now? They'll kill a thing, you know, kill a vehicle in five years and throw it away and, you know, exactly. depreciate it on their so, taxes. And, and that's why some other companies, other converters, you know, were doing 500 vans a year because that's yeah. who they were dialed in with. So, um, how many have you done? Total? I quoted one time like 50 ambulance kits going to like Africa. Okay. And it was like this huge, I was like, this is crazy. Um, but I didn't get it because I'm sure they were bidding to other people too. And, you know, right. We weren't even right. set up for that, but I still bid it. Yeah, yeah I can't imagine. Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, many... it's all private use. Um, mostly RVs now. We're about um, three-quarter of our builds here are RVs. God damn. Yeah. That's cool. Mail order um, is probably the opposite. It's pretty rare that we do a mail order RV kit, mm-hmm. um, but we've, we've done a few. That's wild. But yeah. Seems like such a good time. Those things. God, what a way that to thing, travel! I, I drove around a lot today. That thing is a beast. I love it. It's going home Friday. It, just, it looks so calm, but at the same time, it looks like it do everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great one. It's brand new coach house. It's got the bumper on it now, of course. But um, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. Godzilla cruises down the road, no problem. Um. Really nice setup. Much, those uh, things are big bucks. Those are the high end of the Class C market. Are they? Um, those things are over two hundred grand. What? Two. Yeah. God damn! How much does yeah. that thing weigh? Uh, that thing's probably uh, probably twelve, thirteen. Okay, that's about what I, I would guess. Maybe a little lighter. The big Still. ones are usually about twelve or thirteen, but that one can weigh just as much as a thirty-one footer, um, because all you know, the shit, all the <clears throat> yeah, it's just a bunch of air. Yeah, yeah. Here's my. Um, very- I found now I have to like with social media, I have to do a YouTube video for the YouTube guys. I got to do reels <laughs> for the Instagram people, and yeah. um, and photos. It's like if you if you don't post a reel on Instagram, you get no traction anymore. So, yeah. Oh, you're preaching to the choir over here, homie. Chris has found this out for us. Yeah. So it's tough. The the good news is that once you had the reel developed, like mm-hmm. video format, you can at least roll it in on TikTok for the fun of it. Like I played with TikTok for like two hours and I just got overwhelmed with like <laughs> girls shaking their booties and I was like, I can't. This is I was like, this is two hours of my life done. And yeah. I'm sorry, I just can't do it. So, which my my favorite social media that. story? I just knew that I was like, yeah. this is gonna, I'm like, this is gonna, this is gonna be uh, no, this is gonna put me over the edge. Yeah, that's... my favorite joke social media story about TikTok or Instagram Reels is a uh, youth pastor talking to a group of ki- youths, basically saying, "Don't get on there. All you're gonna see is young girls in bikinis," and it. Not realizing that, like, the algorithm is presenting things to you, sir. Like, yeah, you're yeah. you're <laughs> interacting with certain videos, uh, sir. Yeah. Like, you know which one you're so. clicking on. Exactly. Like, oh man, that that's make what you're seeing, a sir. A whole lot darker, real. Yeah. Quick. No, we the podcast has a TikTok, but they also have a creator center where you can just upload videos, and you don't have to actually like interact with anything. And that's what I do. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just after handy. a while, it's just too much. I'm like, I can't deal with all this. I, I yeah. just have, I don't have the energy for it. Other people yeah. are trying to do YouTube channels and try to be YouTubers, and I'm like, no, I can't. No, I, I, mean, I have a decently successful channel with basically zero effort. Thank you. She also got um, business to run. 
<clears throat> yeah, exactly. I don't have time to make to like edit videos and you know, like what you just watched on that coach house is about as much as you're going to get from me. And, and luckily, it serves I, I've its been purpose. making these kid videos for years since my kids were little. I um, <clears throat> I've gotten pretty good at editing videos because I always do these um, kid videos where I'll take like 50 clips and consolidate them down to two and a half minutes for mm -hmm. family and stuff. So I'm pretty quick at editing, at least on that app. Oh, Dude, yeah. editing can suck yeah. though. Like it can... my brain rolling yeah. on that thing. Ross, we're gonna have you start editing, bud. Okay. He's, I say Ross is about to quit the podcast if he had to edit the show. <laughs> <laughs> see, I'm gonna put it right. And see, I'm giving the edit point right here because not only does he do RVs, he does school buses too. School so. buses. That's rad. Yeah, Steven's school bus is rad. <clears throat> that thing. You want to talk about a social media home run? Is that bus the school bus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a yellow bus on 37s. You can't help but click on it. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, and that's going to get tons of traction. Huh? What's the interior of the bus? Uh, so he's got seating for, and he's, he's going to, I'm going to mess this up. I want to say he's got seating for like eight in there. And then it's got a, a queen size bed in the back, mm -hmm. and a fridge, and a toilet. Um, he's got it pretty pretty basic, but you know they've got he's got actually it's got a rooftop tent on it now, so he's got oh three gosh. boys. The boys go up in the tent, and him and his wife and their daughter uh, sleep in the uh, in the bus. Chris, there yeah, you go. It's pretty awesome. That, that's it. Yeah, that's I just don't want to drive a bus, feet. Ross. Thanks. <laughs> 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 like so, it's so uh, the suburban is also a daily driver. A school bus, yeah, I mm. mean, absolutely, you can drive that every day. But I don't want to drive my kids to school in a bus. That's there's yeah. the interior. There you go. Yeah, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. I mean, it's actually got seating for nine. That's for yeah, that is cool. And the lights still go. That's so funny. That's the um, biggest thing. People are like, you can't do that. It's illegal. You got to take that off. You got to do this. You got to do that. Everybody's a, it's not like a DOT in, lawyer. Impersonating a exactly. cop or something stupid like that. Well, as long as he doesn't yeah, actually right. use them on a public road, you're okay. Yeah. Like, Yeah, when you've got four kids, the last thing you want are more kids. You know? Exactly. Go, like he's picking up kids. <laughs> like, <laughs> big kids are running my ball. No, that doesn't. That's not going to happen. Oh boy! Say so we'll shove them out of the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not adding more kids. Oh boy. Um, yeah, the bus is cool, but yeah, anything on the E series chassis, we'll do it. So speaking Dude, of so great. E series chassis and and not the E series chassis, curious if you've seen the Quigley that's run on Ultimate Adventure the last few years. Yeah, Tiger's van. The, the, the green, green one. Big green one. Yeah. yeah. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Tiger's a lunatic. He is um, a fucking madman. Yeah, he is. Tiger, I saw a clip, I think it was on Dirt at Dave's video uh, recently, and they were like, we don't know if Tiger's crazy or just a really good driver. And they said, well, you kind of have to be crazy to be a good driver. <laughs> but that he is gives true. that thing hell. No um, mercy. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, zero fucks. Um, Pretty much. So yeah, you got to give credit to Tiger for. It. Yeah, you got to give credit to Tiger for for giving it hell and putting on a show. Yeah, he knows how to do that. Um, yeah, does. there were talks because I think because <clears throat> Quigley, you know, they're a sponsor of it, um, but <clears throat> they had two vans on the trip, and then last year there was another van. So this it's weird. There's all this like van traction. Everybody's just like, you should do a, a van only Ultimate Adventure, which is funny to me because Rick Payway, who's one of the guys who started the Ultimate Adventure back <clears throat> in the day, like. Did, does not like vans. Oh, really? That's funny. <clears throat> yeah, he was anti-van. Like, so I used to work at a big off-road shop in California, and we did a lot of magazine stuff. Mm -hmm. So when my first van, Vanaconda, when I built it, I wanted to get it featured in a magazine. Like, you know, who wouldn't want that? It was like one of my dr dreams in life. And every time I would ask one of the editors, they'd be like, no, Rick doesn't want any vans in the magazine. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, damn it, damn it. So, yeah. But I knew I wanted it four-wheel and off-road because it had the most circulation. And I knew I was only going to get one feature. I knew that was it, one and done. Um, so yep. I actually wound up like crowbarring it into the magazine because Fred Williams wanted to shoot this um, Chevy truck that we saw at Axle Swapped. 
and put on like 38s. Mm -hmm. It was a super badass Duramax. And um, I said, yeah, I'll arrange that. Cool. I'll arrange you to shoot that truck if you shoot my van too. And eventually they just got sick of hearing about it from me. And they were like, okay, we'll, we'll shoot the van. So <laughs> um, that's funny. I, I managed to crowbar a, a double feature in like two, I think it was 2006, 2006, I think. Oh man, I probably, um, I've been <clears throat> in, my, in my parents' house, my old bedroom. But it's funny, I like, I, I met everything with Van, I, I met with resistance for years. I mean, even my mm -hmm. old boss at that shop, I was like, let's do some Van stuff. And he was like, no, we're not doing that. And I was like, can we put like a page in the catalog just of Van stuff? And he's like, no, he wanted no part of it. Yeah. And, um, it's so but then, you know, years later, we got a black van on the cover of Four Wheeler magazine, which is just like, what, what is happening? Yeah. It, the, 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 the market kind of obviously changed more towards van life. Yeah. I mean, and it's you guys and Quigley are the two big names. So got to represent, yeah. huh? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Quigley was the one I was talking about earlier where they drew 500 vans a year. And um, so, I mean, they're a legit big manufacturer. That's, that's a lot. Yes. Yeah. We always came in as just like a little more of a boutique. Um, mm -hmm. So we've, we dequigify a lot of vans, which they don't really, they're not really down with, but um, I get, I, and they've showed up, like they've came to my, come to my shop. Like the Quigley guys have come to my yeah. shop. And even Tiger, you know, he's like, you know, you know, you, get, you say some stuff, you know, about us. And I'm like, listen, man, like when I stop getting the emails from people needing help, then I'll stop dequigifying. Right. Right. But as long as I'm getting people emailing me, begging me for help, that's when I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to take care of it. Mm -hmm. Look at that. You're, you're good. There you go. Is that it? That's it. Yeah. Oh man. So to my knowledge, I was panicking that's for a moment. First, <laughs> to my knowledge, that is the first four wheel drive van on the cover of a major magazine in probably thirty years. Hmm. Yeah. Not yeah. That, and we had no idea um, very, that that was going to make it. You know, different. Ollie shot. First of all, the magazines. I don't know if you ever worked the magazine. They hate black vehicles. They do not like shooting black vehicles. Because um, they don't pop the ones. way the other ones do. Yeah. Exactly. So we were shocked. Man. I was definitely shocked. Really. Ollie was shocked. Ollie shot it and he was like, dude, they're going to put that thing on the cover. I was like, what? Apparently, this, well, the school bus was supposed to be on the cover too. Um, but like literally um, weeks before it was going to go to print, that's when they, they, they gave Four Wheeler the final death blow oh. and, and killed the magazine altogether. Sad. Yeah, look at that. That thing so was actually on there more than once. Two. Yeah. Yeah, that was on the cover of two magazines within a year. Um, four wheeler, and then it was on the it was on the cover of uh, another magazine, like a small one called like Eight Lug Work Truck or something. Mm. But um, yeah. which makes sense for that truck. I mean, that's the that's ultimate. What... That's the gearhead. That's the gearhead dream. Like, if you had told me at twelve years old, you're gonna have someone on the ma the cover of a magazine, I would have been. What? Like no way. Right? Oh my god. So like the that's, signature vehicle for your like company. Fantasy of fantasies, <laughs> yeah. man. That's awesome. Oh yeah, like that that's SEMA a, was like, all right, yeah, you get a vehicle to SEMA and you get a cover shot. Like yep. you're pimping. You're pimping right. then. You, so, you don't have to go to SEMA anymore, anymore, do you? I haven't been in years. I was gonna go this year because of the Hoonigan van. We did the van for Scotto. But um, after Dubai, after traveling to Dubai to build those rigs, I was like, mm, I, I want to stay home for a little while. <laughs> so How long were I you in Dubai? A, a week. Wait, damn. That's not even time to adjust, is it? Barely. Like the first day, I thought I was doing good. And then like day two, like the heat really, really kicked yeah. my ass. And like I was the first day we were there working in that shop, I was um, – I was chugging water like I was chugging everything I get my hands on, yeah. and I didn't pee till four o'clock that day. Oh my god! Whoa, <laughs> that's, dude, that's how bad I'm I was like, dehydrated. I mean, it's like quite like that dehydrated too. Yeah, um, the heat over there, and it's it's humid too, so it's not like a desert like the desert heat we're used to here. It's a dry. Um, heat. It is humid. Like yeah. you can see the humidity. Like you can see oh. the sand like in the air. Oh. And like everything under that layer of sand is getting cooked. I mean, the My, feels like temperature on the on the Weather Channel app was, at one day was one thirty four. 
Fuck. What? Fuck. Yeah. The hard. Yeah. It was no. brutal. It that's, was brutal. Uh, no. No. Yeah. For our, for our but, centigrade friends, it's that's like a hundred plus centigrade too. Like it's super spicy for our very friends. I mean, as soon as we got out of the airport, it it hit you. I looked at Steven oh. and I was like, oh no. <laughs> it was like a wall of like you what felt like you walked into an oven like, oh, oh God. this is this is yeah. crazy. But we had a yeah, I definitely did my math wrong. It's only fifty six Celsius. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was fifty. Because oh, a friend of mine is like, is it fifty? Um, Dave's close enough. Yeah, it's hot. hot. On but any, we had any great food, thermometer. great hospitality. We got to view a car collection, um, like a two hundred million dollar private car collection that of a, another customer of mine is part of or tied to. Mm-hmm. It's like an invite only. It was like basically on an army base. Oh my um, god. It's a different insane. Rollover. There it is. Look at that. Is that a Valkyrie? It's Valkyrie. Yeah. Yep. Holy shit, oh, man! I didn't so it cost them fifteen million dollars to get there. What? Um, and the the caretaker, super cool guy from South Africa. We were the only ones there touring, and like they had this huge spread of food for us: coffee, tea, cakes, pastries. It was wow. just us, like three of us there. That's, um, we got it. We got a full tour from the caretaker, and um, yeah. It was, hmm. he is said, the, is, is that a Mercedes McLaren Martin. back there? Yep. Yeah, that's an SLR. One, Sterling Moss. One to the right is Sterling a, Moss. Yep. Yeah. And then that's and a, AMG, a Roadster, and there's a Coupe, too. GTR. Yeah. Dude, there F40. are two G, uh, SLS Cup cars just sitting there. Yeah, it's an F40. Um, a 177. Oh 177? Holy shit. Yeah. That is a collection. Good God. So um, look at these. They're so those is that an two, EB110? Oh my god. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What? Those in two the hell? with the orange trim are the record setting cars. The so Super Sports. I, he had an agreement. Around. Yeah. He basically got an agreement with them. It's like as soon as they set the record, wrap them up and ship them to me. Christ. And, Holy fuck. Seriously? That's a brand new, that's a brand new engine sitting there too. That I, I forgot the story with that. I think they gifted it to him for some reason. <laughs> Just in you, case. Yeah, you spent forty million dollars <laughs> with us. Here's a uh, here's a five hundred thousand dollar engine as a gift. Well, what's funny is the caretaker told us that the sheik was annoyed because Aston Martin said that that Valkyrie needed to be started every three days, and he was like, "Uh, I, like I don't like that. That you want to talk about a rare breed? Look at that thing. That's a good lord GTR GTM, Roadster. GTR There's only like Roadster? three of those. That's yep. fucking crazy." And all of these cars are basically oh um, brand new, no mileage. This is another building that was full of cars. My God, F one hundred, F one hundred. There yeah. were at least a that, dozen that, Land that, Cruisers. That, yeah, those that land, never I, got dealer prepped. Oh my God, that's yeah. either like a BJ forty four or it's like a an old school Nissan Patrol. Like which one? Oh the, yeah, there are multiple. The teal patrols. one, right? Teal one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's a patrol. I can't tell. Oops. Here, I can't. I can't <clears throat> see. But either way, that is that is that is an experience, huh? It's a next <laughs> level. I mean, it was like when this one. I I actually filmed it. I um I didn't put a video on uh on any and anything. It was a a personal video where I I walked in and I was filming and I was like I got goosebumps. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> like I've got goosebumps. Yeah. This is wild. This is wild. But these guys are like is... the new Nissan Patrol comes out, and they'll be like, "All right, give me a hundred of them." You know, a hundred. Yeah, they'll give them to their friends. They'll they'll put them all over their properties. They'll um, they'll keep a few of them just still in plastic, just to put away, just in case. Yeah, just in case um, somebody wants one, or they go up in value. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 that a different is... lifestyle over there, man. Yeah, they don't play. oil oil money is <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but we had a good time. We got we got treated really well. Um, you just yeah, we sweated a lot. Of, yeah, we worked with a bunch of Indian and Pakistani guys, and <clears throat> with with an interpreter, mm-hmm. and that was a trip. Like this big, beautiful shop we were in, and the, the but the the amount of tools they have. Like I guarantee, if we pulled the three of our personal tools at home, we would have more and better quality tools than they had at that shop. Really? It was what? crazy. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's weird. I don't get it. Um, this is something. Like they're all working out of like Harbor Freight plastic toolboxes. When Steven got the, 
got the plasma cutter fired up, they like all stopped working. I looked at him like he was the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> like they wild. hadn't had been able to activate it before. <laughs> it was nuts. But they caught on good and it's it was it was strange, like you know, working with guys who you don't share language with and trying to mm-hmm. teach them kinda. Yeah, yeah. And to show them how to do this, but they caught <laughs> on really quick. Oh um look at that. Widespread but they caught on quick. And by like the second and third rig, they were remembering things and like yelling it at each other, you know. Mm-hmm. Um it was it was That's interesting. Cool. That is pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> so without you know scooping yourself any anything exciting on the horizon maybe not you know 100 million dollar dubai car collection worth but anything, <laughs> anything good in 24 um, you got lined up not really honestly nothing major um we've got i've got my turd van that's kind of the next project for me and uh which is going to be a wheel and rig um mm. only so we're going to pull okay. the glass <clears throat> cage it slide it and uh take it out in the woods and beat the hell out of it I just did a um I just did a video called On the Trail with Nitto Tire at okay. Windrock with the blue truck. That should be out soon. Um that was a lot of fun. We took a van where it had no business being. And um so yeah, we're gonna get the turd van built. Got some trips planned for next year and <clears throat> um just keep building stuff and trying to stay ahead of the game. Keep making cool. money and Building van parts. Um, nothing major. <laughs> nothing. Good um, life. Nothing major. Just kind of the same stuff. But who knows what's going to happen? Okay. You never know. Yeah, cool. No, that's. I, I mean, always have new dumb keep ideas. On, keep on. If you want the barbecue wreck, just let me know. Every time you're through town, I can give you another hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I definitely will. Yeah, we, it looks like we're, we might be coming through early December. I don't know who's going yet, though. But okay. Um, I'll hit you up next time we come well, if you, through. If you sure. need me to take it from KC to there, I can. We can work something out. Like, yeah, just meet you at the airport. <laughs> yeah, that's not too work. bad of a trip. It's, no, KC out Kansas to Denver City is, is very like... exciting. You know, yeah. when you're especially when you leave Denver and you get through Kansas, you're like Kansas City. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, everything it's becomes amazing. hilly and wooded after that. Yeah, it's a nice. It's a nice change. But actually, it's Justin's moving the shop to the western end of Colorado. He's moving to uh, Montrose. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So, that's um, not as year. close. No, that's no. a whole mountain range. you got to get most of the way yeah, out. That adds like eight hours to our trip, so we're going to have to figure that Oof. one out. Eight hours. Where's Montrose? In summer. In the winter. Could yeah. Be yeah. Quite a bit different. So... Didn't, uh, it's not going to be a quick four day. No, billion dollar highway during snowstorms, my friend. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Oh That's my gonna, gosh, we, we might be coming seven. through on seventy in that. Even seventy in a snowstorm. I mean, I'm sure they've got cleared pretty well, but I'm sure it can get hairy. They they I've have been out there that time of year. So once you get to Hayes is where you start, or no, maybe a little before that, it might be Russell is where you start to get the, like they'll close down 70 if it's bad enough kind of, kind of stuff. Um, East of that, you're fine. Um, We don't typically get the blood. Like I treat Salina as like the middle part. Like once you're West of Salina, you've now entered Western Kansas where the wind blows forever. And yeah, it's, Bullshit. (laughs) Not fun in a box truck. No, hopefully this December trip gets them fed for a couple months and we can maybe Mm -hmm. not come out till February. Um, But we'll see. Or we might ship stuff via regular truck for a little while. Dude, Montrose. Even though we we run out every two two months, we still wind up shipping pallets in between there too. Okay. Stuff. So. Yeah. That is he is he in the Denver area currently? Yeah. Oh my Just Montrose is a very different place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all I mean his whole crew, they're all down, they're all ready to go. They're all his guys are like, Yeah, we're down, let's do it. That's awesome. <clears throat> Which is neat. That's very that's cool. much more affordable over there, apparently. There, okay. He's like an hour and a half to Moab. Yeah. Um it's a so, good spot, yeah. Man. yeah. Well, and like Ure's just south, like all the Telluride, yeah. Ridgeway, all that fun mm-hmm. stuff down there. Like, 
yeah, which is cool. One of my good friends from here actually just is just moved to Ure and he's built there, building a house there. So nice. I talked to him. He's like, "Yo, bro, come on, let's go." I got another good buddy in Telluride. So I'm like, yeah. all right, well, maybe this trip's going to become like a week now. I can just chill for a day or mm-hmm. two, then yeah, drive take home. Take one of the yeah. campers. I don't know. I wish I camp. Well, it's funny. We do these big road trips. You look at every other rig on the road, and you're like, how can I make this more comfortable? You know, how can I avoid hotels? You know, How can yeah. I get something big enough to have a little sleeper? Um, mm. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll evolve. I'm not really – I don't really feel like dropping 100 grand on a – on a, a bad dude, you know, fifth wheel. Right. That with your Most horse trailers, but, it has like a little apartment in the front. And then yeah, yeah. Go back. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Dude, there's got to be some of those secondhand all over the Midwest somewhere. Like you crazy. I would put hope. A, put a market. I did a quick look last week, actually, and it seemed like 50, 60 G's you could get one. But I didn't think. Okay. That, I'm sure. I'm sure there are better deals, but. Well, and it, I'm sure it also goes into like the RV financing law. So like if you want to, it becomes like a mini mortgage of like 15 years or whatever to, yeah. to do all of that. Like, it's a possibility. We'll see. I never thought I'd be in the freight business, but, <laughs> but here, he, my, here my brother-in-law is getting into it too. And he's down in Florida <laughs> when he, when he switched yeah. over to an F-250 Super Duty, I was like, dude, what are you doing? You're a firefighter. And he's like, well, maybe I have other stuff. So. He he bought a trailer and I think has already made enough money that he's paid off his trailer that he purchased. So cool. So if you yeah, want another guy to run some stuff from North Carolina to Colorado, I might know another well, guy. <laughs> we, we've had, and I'll probably get it after this after this uh, video too. Like I've had so many guys volunteer. Like as soon as we talked, started talking about doing it, guys like I'll do it. I'll come drive it. I'll come. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Like people, strangers. So dude. There is something about road trips. Like I, Ross makes fun of me all the time. I he, I look at five to seven hours as nothing. Like I, I went straight yeah. through to Moab one day. Like I did it a mm-hmm. day. Like it's a long day, but like. Yeah. I, I like the, it too. I think what it is is we're, you know, we get busy. We have families and kids and we're yeah. like two days in the car by myself. Listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. You know, okay. I was, I was With homesick. No, I wanted to get home. But yeah. I was like, I can do this. That's the weird part of it, though. As soon as you're gone for like two to three days, you're like, God damn it, I'm missing stuff. Yeah, I, know. I couldn't <laughs> wait yeah. to get home. I was like, get me home. Yeah. Yeah. So, I did straight through back from Moab, from Green River, all the way back to KC on the way home. And I was like, oh, I'm making it home. Like, I am not stopping. Far as I am getting there. Um, I think it was like 14. 1,400 miles? No, oh, no, no. Oh, no, no. 14 yeah. hours. Um, no, it was like 1,400 miles. Oh, my God. God <laughs> so, yeah, those are different entities. Green River. I mean, it's got to be a good 800 miles, though, right? 1,000 miles. I used to be able to pull um, off 1,000-mile days pretty easy, which is like from here. It to Oklahoma is 943. Yeah. yeah. So from Green we, River to KC. We measure. It's weird how the miles and hours don't always translate, you know, because I've done – seven hours from one direction where you go 300 miles or seven hours in another direction where it's 600. Yeah. 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 When I was, when I first moved back from California and, and I was still going out West every now and then I would, I would Paul ass do a thousand miles, make it past Oklahoma city and then just like pull in a Walmart and crash in the van. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But at that point I Is start it- seeing like, guys dancing around the road you know like little white guys like clouds yeah. like dancing yeah. like right. yeah it's like vegas you know for years i would we would go to vegas for sema or whatever and and you know we were three four hours to la and i'd be like i can drive home tonight because you're in vegas you know yeah. you're in the bubble lights and there's so much going on you're like i'm totally fine i can three hours no you're problem the day, right? as soon as you get out of the mm-hmm. desert and get to prim and it's like black you're like oh, <laughs> this yeah. is a bad idea yeah. that's a terrible idea so yeah. speaking of crashing, I need Russ crashing. So yeah, man, it's fucking. Chaos. I'll wrap us up real quick. Yeah, um, sorry, not short. For anybody wanted to keep going, but I am. You're welcome to keep. No, going. We're like My over an hour is... past my bedtime. So, dude, <laughs> me too. My brain is fucking mashed potatoes right now. All right, I'm gonna wrap it up real fast. So you can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. This is how I know we use old show notes because it only says iTunes. I don't even think iTunes is a thing anymore. So rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. I just get a podcast. copy of the show notes from our last 
show with Chris. We'll yeah, but like this. we've updated stuff from wow. two years ago. Wow. <laughs> That's why I had to adjust some things. <laughs> like and subscribe uh, on YouTube. Um, you can follow Chris. It's at you join off road and then you join off road Colorado. All one word, right? Uh, there's an underscore in there. Underscore on Colorado. Man, see, I knew yeah, I missed you something. You join off road underscore co. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, no matter what, you get to watch badass off road dance on either account. Yep. So, yep. Um, yeah, follow Hooniverse, the real Hooniverse on. Sorry, we do a lot what of cross promotion stuff. We do a lot of cross promotion stuff on Instagram and stuff too. So they're not hard, not hard to find either one of us. Awesome. Um, Ross is no, not like the one from Friends, and I'm a, at Overlanding Dad, and we did a show. Thank you, Chris. Well, thanks, Chris. Good to see you guys. Thanks again. <laughs> I'll see you too. Hopefully I'll hit you up when we're coming through Kansas City. Yeah.